Hey you guys, welcome back to Beamer and Light. I am back you guys with another word y'all, Holy Spirit speaking. So I just got off an awesome prayer call with one of my friends and I wanted to share this. Something just like sparked in my spirit. The Holy Spirit just put this, downloaded this in my spirit. And I want to share it with you guys because it's very, very, very important for those of you guys that are waiting and believing for marriage. Um, I want to share with you the importance of picking a spouse, right? Waiting on the Lord, number one, most important. Let me, let me say in in an order that is like fashionable. So you want to build in your relationship with Christ and you want to be able to wait on the Lord that he's pruning you, that he is raising you up, whether that's in your ministry, right? Our purpose is to bring the will of God forth in our lives. That is the very main purpose of why we are in the kingdom of God. It is to win souls. It is to walk in the provision of God, right? We want to see God for ourselves in our relationships, in our friendships, in our family. We want to see God in our lives. And that is a very, very important quality when meeting your spouse. And when you go to identify your spouse, there's, I made a video, which I will link it down below in the description box, talking about um, qualities of a kingdom spouse, qualities of a spouse for marriage. Go ahead and watch that video if you haven't watched it yet, because it explains how to identify this person. How does this per- What is this person supposed to look like? And I think it's very important because some people have questions like, how do I know this is from God? How do I know that this is a counterfeit? So that video might give you a lot more insight as to identifying identifying your spouse. So I want to share with you that when it comes to what God is doing in your life, right? You're running your race. We go to Hebrews 12, run your race. It's for the endurance he builds up within us. We're walking worthy of our callings. We are focused on the Lord and on God alone. And when it comes to your spouse, not only is there a per- pursuit coming from whether it's this man of God and there is this effort coming from this woman of God, it has to match. And I'm, I'm sharing this today as the Holy Spirit leads me to. I'm sharing this today because when it comes to marriage, it is not just all butterflies and rainbows. It is great to have the fun aspect of your marriage as it should be fun in a lot of ways. You want to have that environment but you also want to have a strong foundation. And I get a lot of messages, especially from a lot of young girls, sharing that, you know, is this person, you know, for me? And I'll ask them, well, what are the qualities? Like, what what are they saying? What does their relationship with God look like? Because they could say they go to church. They could say they read their Bible. And that's great. Let's not take that away. But what we're talking about is how does their relationship look like? Are you going by the word of God you yourself? Are you using the word of God to discern the fruits, right? God says, you will know them by their fruit. You will know people by their fruit. What are, if they're reading the word of God, if they're applying the word of God, if they're seeking God, if they're in prayer, then you're going to know the fruit by what they speak, right? He says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What we treasure is what we desire. So if your relationship is tight with God, that means that you're on fire for God. That means that things of God are important to you. And that's so important. That matters. It matters, you guys. So again, when it comes to identifying a spouse, make sure that you give it back to God. Make sure that if you meet this person, give it back to God. If you meet this person, pray about this to God. Fast about this to God. You want God's best for your life. And I always say never settle for less than God's best because it's not worth it. Um, A bit of my testimony, I grew up in a broken household. My mom and dad divorced when I was very young. I was four years old. And as a kid, you don't understand. As you get older and older, you see the effects of it if it's not corrected, right? If it's not corrected in the in, through in whole, the Holy Spirit. If it's not corrected it becomes detrimental to the people around. And because it affected me for so many years, I always thought to myself, like, I don't want marriage. I feel like this is what I know about marriage. But it was a season where God awakened me to the desire for marriage. See, a lot of people are like, that's not for me. I don't want to get married, blah, blah, blah. Great. That's not your season. And that's fine. But 
I remember in a season where I was downing marriage, I was like, well, I'm okay being by myself. I'm okay. That's not the correct posture to even have. And so I had to come to this place of surrendering what I thought was good, what I thought was okay, and what I thought wasn't okay, and surrendering that to the Lord to receive His best for my life. So I want to share this with you guys because the person you marry becomes the most important decision of your life outside of your salvation. You coming to Christ is number one, first and foremost. Number two is the person you end up with because you're going to birth children with that person and there's consequences that happen outside of a godly marriage you know if if it's godly things will align in the way god intended it to be because it is a holy covenant from him he designed marriage man and woman to be married to be you know the woman being the helpmate the wife being the helpmate and you can only submit to a husband as a wife so i i, I was watching this sermon where the pastors were saying it's like this conference between a husband and wife their pastors they were saying how can a woman submit to a man when she's just the woman to that man? She's not his wife. There's a huge difference. And I think we have to really step into the reality of God called me to be his bride. And in selflessness, in surrender, we trust God in his word. So it, I came to a place in my life, especially in a season where I wanted God's best for me, even if it meant I needed to wait. And it's been a long wait. There's, I'm not perfect. There's moments where I was lonely. I'm like, God, I see my friends having children and getting married and all these amazing things. But it got to a place where I literally was like, you know what, God, I surrender what I think is best for me. And I'm going to stand in agreement to what you have for me. And until that happened, then I started to see God move even more. And so I share this with you guys because you probably hear kingdom marriages a lot. You probably hear marriages coming together. You probably hear your friends getting married and God, you just see it around. And I want to just kind of exemplify and share in this word to you guys today that marriage is good. And in this season where God awakens your heart to start praying for marriage, he's preparing you and he's preparing someone for you. Wait on the Lord, right? He says, wait on the Lord and he will renew your strength. And that could not have been any more true. And so when one door closes to something that maybe wasn't for us, or maybe when the door closes, which I will share a bit of my testimony later on, um, but I want to share that when a door closes, God's opening a new door, and that door is good for you. And wait on Him to open the door. Wait on Him to give you the keys. Wait on Him to give you the knowledge and wisdom for that next door to walk through. Amen. So I pray this blesses you guys. God has marriage for many of his sons and daughters. You're not hearing wrong. You're not crazy. People may say, man, you talk about this all the time, but I want you to just give it back to him so we don't make an idol out of marriage, but that we give it back to him and allow him to speak to us on his terms about what he's saying and always giving it back to him to even when you meet that person, give them back to God, give them completely back so that God can tell you of things to come, giving you wisdom insight. He says understanding is from the Holy One. We go to Proverbs. Um, so I pray this blesses you guys and I will talk to you guys soon. God bless you.